I think it's a great chance to be here, and it's a great conference and a great venue um, with a lot of interesting people. Um, my name is Saskia Edas. I've been a Wikipedian since 2013, and I've mainly been involved in projects focusing on the gender gap. And I've been asked, because of my involvement in those projects, to do a presentation on the topic of imbalance. So the anchor of my presentation kind of was a mission statement of Wikipedia, which is imagine a world in which every single person on the planet is given free access to the sum of all human knowledge. And with that statement, I wanted to know or look at whether there are barriers in accessing and editing Wikipedia and content deficits uh, resulting from those deficits. Um, so because this user digest presentation should be focused on people that have no basic knowledge, um, our first basic thing to explain is what Wikipedia is. It's an online encyclopedia that is made up by volunteer contributions based on valid citations. There are currently 5.2 million articles in the English version and overall 40 million wiki pages. Um, if you printed out the English version, it would um, have approximately the size that you can see on this slide. And the impact of Wikipedia is that it's the seventh most visited website in the world. The number one source a lot of people go to for the first impression on the subject, and this has about 15 billion page views per month. Um, I have a small video showing where Wikipedians come from. No. Oh, fuck. And it's unfortunately not playing. So. I'm from Nepal. I'm from Iraq. I'm coming from India. I'm from Byron, New Jersey. I live in Birmingham, England. Chicago, Illinois. La Paz, Bolivia. Nairobi, Kenya. Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Milan, in Italy. South Africa. Poland. Japan. Armenia. Brazil. Russia. Botswana. Israel. Uzbekistan. Hong Kong. Istanbul. In Mexico. Chattanooga, Tennessee. Yeah, so you see a very diverse crowd in this video, but uh, then it's there's a question of whether there are regions that contribute more and regions that contribute less. And one thing that I learned during my preparation, was, which was quite stunning for me, is that the majority of all people living on the planet don't have access to the internet. So currently there are about 7.3 billion people on this planet, out of which 3.9 don't have no access to the internet, so obviously they cannot contribute to the project and also not access it. And if you look at it uh, at the number and not the percentage of a country that has um, access to the internet, you'd see that the United States and China have most internet users and uh, in general that the global north has more internet users than the global south. Um, so that's the internet access, but one other thing that you'd have to look at when you're considering access is the language barrier, um, because the content should be provided in the language that the people are speaking. Um, so you'd have to know what languages are the most spoken on the planet. Uh, the language is, uh, that is the most spoken on the planet is English. 1.5 billion people speak it as a primary or secondary language. Chinese is the second most spoken language with 1.3 billion people. And Arabic and Spanish follow after that with 0.5 billion. So um, those people would obviously be able to access the big, biggest language versions of Wikipedia that are currently up and running, but then there are also small countries with small populations in which the content on those language version is um, not so big and also not so good in quality. So they need help in translation. And there, at this conference, there are also other talks focusing on translation. So if you're interested in that subject, um, you should definitely go there. And one thing that I looked at 
uh, in the language versions is uh, which are the language versions that have the most editors per million speakers. And then you'd find that, um, for example, the Hebrew version or the Catalan version, the Icelandic and the Scandinavian versions have a lot of editors in comparison to how many people speak that language. Also Central Europe, North America and Australia. And there are not so many editors, for example, in India and Sub-Saharan Africa. Um, the language that most people read is obviously English with 76% and the language that most people edit is also English with 49% followed by the German version and the Spanish version. And if you'd want to know where edits come from, if you look at all over the world, you can see in the dark red colors is where most edits come from which is the United States, um, Germany, Western Europe, and Russia, and um, less edits coming from Africa and Central Asia. Um, solutions to uh, counter the imbalance in ge geographic distribution that I came up with in discussions with other Wikipedians would be to support the Wikipedians and networks existing in those countries also to provide them with the necessary tools, um, which uh, means access to literature, hardware or technical support, for example, and hardware and software that helps them to translate content into their languages. Also to support GLAM initiatives uh, in countries with less participation, because um, then you would make the knowledge that is stored in archives, libraries, and museums in those regions accessible for everyone. And also you would get the exact people that have the Wikipedia spirit involved, which are people that are interested in publishing and sharing knowledge. And it's also very important to make it easier to read and edit Wikipedia for mobile devices because there are a lot more people on this planet that have access to mobile devices than there are people that have access to laptops or computers. So if you'd make that easier, it would be much easier for all of those people to participate in Wikipedia. And um, there's also a talk at this conference, for example, focusing on, on Wikipedia Zero, which is a project in which um, Wikimedia Foundation is collaborating with mobile network um, providers to make it easier in those countries to access Wikipedia. Another imbalance uh, that was also mentioned in the previous talk is the gender gap that I focused on um, in my project. And there are several project um, surveys um, on this gender gap the UN Merit Survey, the Mickey, Wikimedia Foundation self-reporting study, and the MIT study that all found that um, only 9 to 16% of all editors are female. You can also look at the difference between the countries. Um, then you'd find that in Germany, 8% um, are female, in India, only 3%, and in the United States, 14%. And um, the question is why women don't edit Wikipedia so much. Um, one reason is that they find the editing interface not user-friendly, which is actually something that has uh, significantly improved with the visual editor now, um, but it's still a little off-putting. They have time constraints. Studies have shown that uh, women in general have less free time for their hobbies because they do more unpaid household work or care for children. So overall, they just have less time. Some women lack self-confidence. They don't think that their information is worth putting up. Um, they are conflict averse to the hostile tone that sometimes um, you find on discussion pages in Wikipedia or deletion discussions. Um, one study found that they are more likely to have the first edits reverted and then they don't continue. And uh, that study also found that the reason why that was is that they started editing on more controversial topics in which there was more discussion anyway. Another reason is the misogyny. 
that you sometimes find within the community, um, the lack of a social community um, on Wikipedia. If you look at websites like Facebook or Twitter, you have more female users on that websites um, because of the social aspect and the communication aspect. But um, if you look at Wikipedia, there's not that much of this communication and community. And also in some language versions, for example, like German and Portuguese, the uh, default gender is male. So when you register, you're um, automatically identified as male and you'd have to change it to be seen as a female. And um, this has effects on the content. Um, this graphic shows um, that there are a lot more biographies about men than there are biographies about women. Um, and also on how women are described on pages. Um, here you can see that um, they are far more often described in their relationship to someone in comparison to men, for example, as being the wife of someone. So how do you solve that and increase the female editorship? Um, so Gardner had this goal of raising the percentage to 25% by 2015. And different fees for how to do that from unlocking the clubhouse. And those fees were that women should recruit other women, so women that are already part of the community should go and um, get other women involved and help them become community members. That you should stage and recruit women-only events. Um, that you shouldn't get dissuaded by opposition. If people are criticizing you for funding those projects, you should still continue with it. Um, everyone should work to create and protect a female-friendly environment, and you should um, emphasize the social impact of the project. And I have a video on what that social impact would mean. At the beginning of my joining to Wikipedia 2008, I started many articles. One of them, I think it was about a lady called Maryam Noor. We didn't have an article about it, so, and this was my first article. So I forget about it. Maybe two or three years later, I passed by this article. I was shocked. More than 100,000 people read this article. They used it. So they got their information from this article. They passed by this article. So you feel like you affected and influenced more than 100,000 people. I think Wikipedia gave me this chance to really make a huge difference in the world. It's like an investment for your future, for your children's future. So, mentioning the social aspect and recruiting women is super important, that you can influence people and help people with the information that you set up and that you're also creating something that will be helpful for the future. And I wanted to present you some examples from Berlin, different projects that were started um, to increase content about women and also female editorship. Um, the first one is Women Edit which was a project that started everything and was run by Sylvia Stienicke. And I also have a video where she explains what that project was about. My name is Sylvia Stienicke. I'm a Wikipedia user for a year now, and I'm a freelancer for Wikimedia Deutschland, and I organized the Women Edit uh, project, which is an outreach project uh, for women who are interested in editing Wikipedia and other projects. About a year ago, I started a monthly meetup in Berlin for women who want to edit, and uh, that was quite successful um, because it's a nice social event, a safe space for women, of course, and uh, we get together, discuss Wikipedia topics, and edit together. And uh, women teach each other how to do that, um, and people come back every month. And now we are trying to adapt this idea um, 
to make it work in other places in Germany. And um, my first step was to find uh, wiki women who want to volunteer and uh, offer meetups like that or organize an editathon or an editing party, whatever they want to do, and I support them in doing that. I think women don't have as much time as men have because usually they have a job, they uh, study at university, they have family, kids, friends, a partner, whatever, and um, surveys have shown that men often have more time for their hobbies and uh, women have don't have that time. And some women are too shy to, uh, to think that they can really contribute anything. Many women say, I don't have anything to tell, I don't have anything to write, which is not true and I try to empower them. So that was the project with which I got started and um, the first article that I wrote was a translation from the English Wikipedia about the article on misophonia and that article was actually featured on the main page of the German Wikipedia which means that it was seen by over 70,000 people in two days which was something that inspired me so much and um, made me want to continue on the project because I saw that I introduced a subject on which only English literature and research was um, publicly available to people that speak the German language. And after I published that article on Wikipedia, I also found um, German research, television segments on the subjects, and forums in German about the subject. So I felt like I really made a difference and influenced a lot of people and made that subject available by translating it. And so I was very inspired by this project Women Edit, as were other women that were part of it. And they started their own projects, for example, one project is Wiki Women Unterwegs, which means Wiki Women on the Go. In this project, they go to different women projects in Berlin and write articles about their projects on Wikipedia. The user that um, started this um, um, project is FCT Berlin, and she is also at this conference. If you're interested in this project or want to do this in your own country, then I'm sure she'd like to talk to you about it. Um, another project is Wikipedia Filmfrauen, which means Wikipedia movie women, and that was started by user WS Reno, who is also at this conference and you, who you can talk to about that project. In this project, they go to different film festivals, as for example the Berlinale, and do editor fonts at these film festivals about women in the film industry. And one project that I was involved in is Women Wikipedia Design. Uh, we focused on writing articles about women in the built environment on Wikipedia. There were workshops held on three different continents in New York, Berlin and Melbourne. And we developed also material that not only this project can use but other projects can use to introduce people on how to edit Wikipedia and tell a lot of workshops and editor fonts to write articles about the subject and wrote a lot of content in the German and English Wikipedia on women in the built environment. And why I thought that was so important is that um, in the built environment only 9% of all people that work there are women. So when you have young women studying architecture and engineering, it's hard for them to find examples of women that actually succeeded in the profession and made their way in this area. And when you have these articles up accessible for everyone, it's easy for young women to find those examples. If you summarize what could be the solutions to counter gender imbalance, for me, it would be to support female Wikipedians from inside the community to help recruit other women to become members of the community, um, support initiatives similar to Women Edit or Wiki Loves Women, all women projects like women scientists, and also to have mechanisms for helping to report cases of harassment, and also support from the community in not tolerating harassment. Um, 
One thing that I wanted to mention very quickly is um, because I talked to people about it before and uh, it was important for me as I got the chance to, to speak at this conference to at least mention it and that is that I think that there are problems in the system of how Wikipedia is set up because it happens that users are blocked or harassed, not for vandalizing the site, but for trying to insert minority views or actually re-editing an article in which information is misrepresented. And um, I think it would be very important to come up with a solution so that do that doesn't happen anymore. Also, all kinds of agenda editing whether you have a political agenda where you're trying to smear another party, a personal agenda where you're trying to destroy the reputation of your competitors, a financial agenda where you're editing your own company's site so yet you get more customers, or also if you're paid for editing and not declaring it so that you write non-neutral content. And also, I find it problematic when experienced users that have a big standing within the community use their power to oppress minority views or information. And to solve those problems, I think the community itself is not enough. You'd need help from the Wikimedia Foundation. And um, I have a short introduction in what the Wikimedia Foundation is. It's um, based in San Francisco, the United States, and its mission statement is to empower and engage people around the world to collect and develop educational content under free license or in the public domain and to disseminate it effectively and globally. It currently has 41 chapters all over the world, which you can see in the dark blue colors, but also new chapters that are going to be set up. And while talking to German Wikipedians, um, uh, I heard of, of some problems that I also wanted to, to mention here, which is that it's difficult for the chapters outside of the United States to run long-term projects because they usually get one-year budget restraints and they don't know how much money they will have in two or three or five years. Also that the chapters sometimes receive guidelines on how to um, spend the budget and that's a control that might not uh, be appropriate for what the community in that country wants right now and uh, will lead to conflict. And also there's a lot of fluctuation and personnel would make it difficult to learn from long term, from short term projects. Yeah. And what the community would want is more involvement in new software or feature development um, and more influence on the board. As the core project is created by volunteer contributions, that's so important. The donations are generated by volunteer contributions, so it's very important that members of these volunteers are pre present in the board. Currently, we have three seats, but um, there were problems uh, with these members of the volunteer community. Two of them resigned and one of them left and what we would also like is more transparency in how projects are funded and why they are funded that way. Um, my conclusion overall that it's still Wikipedia is a great collection of knowledge and that it's very useful in many lives of people who have access to the site and that it's worth fighting for and continuing to work on the initial ideas. And um, I hope that we will all work together on this project and continue to work on this regardless of what country we come from, what region we come from, um, what age we have or what gender we identify as. And thank you so much for listening to me. <laughs> if you have any questions, um, I would ha be happy to answer them.